Eventually, there comes a time where we have to supply voltage to some device on our vehicles. And it can be confusing, so today I'm going to try and clear the air on the best ways of finding power on your car. So stick around. Welcome to the garage. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. And today we're talking about a subject that's near and dear to my heart because it's how I got started I don't know, 20 some years ago working on cars. You know, a lot of us have backgrounds in doing stereos and things like that because it's whenever you're a teenager, it's one of the more exciting things. But as we move into the later years, or the years where we're trying to build power and things like that, a lot of devices require us to tap into power somehow, some way. Now there's a couple ways of doing this. Uh, one of them is, you know, attaching power to a battery, with a fuse and a switch. Make sure if you ever wire anything to a distro block onto the battery, you always fuse that device. I don't want to explain to you what will happen if you do not, but in one word, fire. So make sure there's always a fuse there. Uh, that, that's very important. Some other things that we need to take into consideration is if we want different power states. And by power states, I mean always on, on whenever the car's in accessory or higher, and by higher I mean accessory on, and then start or only do we want it on during uh, the run, when the key's in the run position. And there's some devices that will also stay on during cranking. Uh, I don't know of anything that anybody would ever be installing that would need necessarily power during cranking. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, a situation that if you are powered up during a cranking, you could cause some issues. So let's get into some of the tools that we use whenever we're looking for power. And I'm telling you right now, one of the big ones that you don't need is a multimeter. Yes, I have one. I, in fact, I've got about four of these things because of what I do for a living. You don't need a multimeter on a car. And I'll explain to you why. Everything's 12 volts on there. You know, and almost every device that you put on there, you're gonna have a load rating for. And by load, I mean amperage or watts. So we know kind of uh, beforehand what the amperage or the watts is, so we're not having to do load testing on the car. And the other side of it is, is if when in doubt, start with a small fuse and then work your way up until you find what fuse supports your load. So put a one amp on there. If it pops, you know that you're drawing more than one amp. Put a five amp on there. If it pops, you know you're drawing more than five amps. Wouldn't do, wouldn't do that much above maybe 10 or 15 amps. Uh, but you know, you're gonna be running a fairly heavy device before it pulls that kind of load. An amplifier, maybe a pump of some sorts, but your day-to-day -day devices are not gonna be pulling that much of a load. Uh, so that being said, the most important tool you can have is a test light. And it can be the cheapest test light that you can find. I mean, this thing probably cost a dollar, but it works. And it's an effective way of finding voltage and determining the states that you're finding the voltage in. So if you're looking to find a switched power source like I'm gonna to do today, uh, this test light's perfect for that. Uh, other things that are good to have are butt splices, but there's a caveat that goes with that. If you're going to use butt splices, you need to have the proper crimpers for butt splices. Don't use pliers, don't use needle nose. You need to get a pair of terminal crimpers. And uh, you know, these can be found about anywhere. You know, Harbor Freight, your local auto parts store, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, get a pair of crimpers because if you use pliers, you are going to have wires come loose. You're not gonna get good continuity. So spend the money, get a decent pair of crimpers. Uh, if we're running a higher power load, you need a relay and you can use an automotive style relay that will have an amperage on it and this one will do an 80 amp load across it. And what this does is you run power from your battery through this relay to your device and then you have a trigger wire that will run off of something else that enables that high load power to go to your device. And so we would tie this back to a on state on the key and then tie the load over to something like an amplifier or a pump. You know, this would be great uh, if, if you were running a water pump for a air to water intercooler or something. Or you can use an actual industrial relay. I've got a couple of these things sitting around. They're expensive and there's no reason to really use those. 
instead of an automotive relay. So these things are cheap. Get them down at your local auto parts store. Some other good things to have are wire taps. And this is a good way of, if you know that you have a wire that has a source of power and you have a low amperage device, say, you know, like my radar detector, I have this thing tied in uh, hardwired using a wire tap. Uh, and another good thing to have is fuse taps. But I don't have any fuse taps. Uh, you'll find, if you look on like Amazon, uh, a uh, product called Adafuse. And literally it is a device that goes into an existing fuse space moves the original fuse out to the side and then gives you a spot for a new fuse. Really good for adding low amperage devices. In fact, whenever we go over and look at the car, I've got one set up right now. You'll see what it looks like. I love those things, they're perfect. So those are the big things, as I said, you know, you wanna make sure you have crimpers, proper crimpers for your, your butt splices. You wanna have a good test light. Then other than that, you just need to know what you're looking for. So you need to know if we're looking for an always-on situation, a switched situation, an accessory-only situation, you know, whether or not we need to add some, some uh, switches or anything like that. So, okay, today we're going to put all this together and we're going to look for a circuit. Basically, my situation is, is I've got a device that rescales my fuel level sender since I have a fuel cell. And... Uh, whenever I initially hooked that up, it was kind of one of those situations where I need to get power to it today. I don't have time to really mess around. And so I just tied it into the 12 volt for the trailer output uh, jack in the back. And that unfortunately is on constant. Uh, not much of a problem except the truck sits for weeks, sometimes a month or more at time, and it's been killing the battery. In fact, the battery's on its last leg. If you've seen some of my other videos, you might see me have to start the truck every once in a while because if I leave accessories on too long, it will kill the battery. So the solution to that is we need to find a circuit that is only on whenever the key's in the on position or the run position. And luckily this is a low uh, amperage device, so we should be able to just find an existing one, tap into that, and be perfectly fine. It is a solid state device. It doesn't even pull a, a, a whole amp. So. Uh, so we're going to dive underneath the hood. I've got the, the fuse box opened up. We're going to check out a couple of the fuses over there. I'll show you how to use the test light to uh, determine uh, which fuses are what. And then we'll also maybe look at the, the fuse map on there to get a general idea because we know some of the systems that are going to be enabled only whenever the key's on. So uh, let's go ahead and jump over there and see what we can find out. Okay, hopefully you can kind of see here. I, uh, this is where I've got a fuse tap in here. Let me see if I can adjust the light a little bit so you can better see how that fuse tap looks. And it taps in. And then you've got the bottom fuse, which is your existing amperage. And then you have a top fuse, which is your secondary system that you're fusing. And then just goes in the original spot. So your bottom fuse can pop, but you'll still have power to your top fuse, to your secondary system, or vice versa. So if your add-on system that you have on there blows your fuse, your original device will still be powered up. So something else that we're looking at is uh, on some of these, they're not going to be systems you want to use as a spot to tap in. In particular, I'm talking things like the fuel pump or any of the ECM stuff, any of the electro electronic modules in the vehicle. Don't use those as tap spots. Uh, you're just asking for issues later on down the road whenever you're uh, trying to troubleshoot some stuff. So uh, with your light, you want to find a good ground. And that's something that's going to be connected back to chassis ground somewhere. And then you can come in and there's spots on the top of these fuses where the metal sticks through so you can easily test. You only have to test one side for power. Most of these are only powered on during the on state, so they're not going to have any power on them. If you were testing, oh, there's one that's hot constantly. But if you were testing to see if the fuse were bad, you can use a device that touches both of these and checks continuity across them. An ohm meter or a multimeter is good for that. So we can reference this one back to see what it is on the uh, fuse map. And that is actually the AC climate control. And the reason it's on is because I just opened the door. This will actually shut off. Yep, there, it turned off. So if I were to open the door back up, that would come back on. So 
So now that I've opened the door, well, I said that, maybe it won't. Well, yeah, I'm not getting a good ground is why, but there we go. So that's actually a pretty good candidate for what we're looking for. I know that that's going to be on when the vehicle's running. It has a timeout on it, but it will be on before the vehicle starts also, which will be good for the fuel sender because if the fuel sender signal is uh, not powered up whenever the gauge cluster comes on, it'll throw a check engine light. Uh, ask me how I know. So that one's probably going to be a perfect spot for us to tap off. So the next step would be to get another fuse tap like this, tap it into that location, and then run the wire back in there. Okay, there you have it. Pretty simple. Uh, you know, it's not rocket science by any means, but if you do have any questions on any kind of electrical stuff, make sure you hit up the comments. Uh, you know, I'll be able to get back to you quick with answers. Or if you would like to see something a little bit more in depth on that side of it, I can. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, but I could go into showing you how to use a, a multimeter if you if you want to get into it. But as I said, I highly suggest just using a test light. It, man, it works great in this in, on cars, and you know you're you're not really going to need anything other than just knowing where you have voltage. Uh, so as usual, I want to thank you for stopping by. If you enjoyed this video, uh, throw that thumbs up. If you didn't like it, throw a thumbs down. Either way, hit me up in the comments. Tell me what you like, what you don't like. Uh, and hit that subscribe button down there in the corner because I'm going to have some more of these shorter tech series videos coming out in the coming weeks where we just touch on some, some quick topics, you know, be shorter videos to digest some information. And uh, so I'm always open to any kind of suggestions. If you have anything that you're interested in learning about, once again, hit up the comments and let me know. I will uh, try and do a video on any subjects that you guys want to talk about. So I've got some stuff coming up. Uh, you know, I'm getting ready to do some spark plugs, so I want to talk about spark plugs and heat, heat ranges and things like that, specifically whenever you're making more horsepower or you're in, in forced induction. So that's going to be one of the next ones that we do, another kind of quick overview of, of things like that. So once again, uh, thanks for stopping by the garage.